everyone. Welcome to another episode of Crush on This with my very, very good wine lady friends. I'm Christine Campbell of Girls Go Grape. And I am Cindy Reining of Grape Experiences. And I'm Allison Levine from Please the Palette. Today we are talking about Cremant. Ooh, ooh la la. Um, you know, hands up if you love sparkling wine. Hands up. Hands up if uh, you like finessed and elegant wines. And hands up if you don't always want to pay for that in a bottle of champagne. <laughs> so, you got so it. Cremant, Cremant is this most beautiful kind of starter for a lot of people. It is made with the exact same regulations. Well, give or take. Um, then, then champagne, it needs to age for a minimum of nine months. And Cremant is exactly what champagne is, but just not produced in the Champagne region of France. There are eight, count that, eight uh, Cremant uh, regions in France, and there's one in Luxembourg. And I have a feeling, just a sneaking suspicion, that all three of us have chosen a Cremant from a different region of France. So, Cindy, do you want to start us off? So, if anyone saw the very first episode of Crush on This, you know how my first crush was the Loire Valley, wines from the Loire Valley. And I chose a Cremant de Loire, Royal Ackerman. And this is less than $20. You can find it for $20, maybe a little bit less. Uh, the house was, the house of the Royal Ackerman was founded in 1811. It's one of the oldest uh, house of fine bubbles in the Loire Valley. Um, in fact, I was in Saumur, spent a week uh, in Saumur twice, and just down the road was the Ackerman family's chateau. So I think that's kind of a fun fact. So of course we had to get plenty of Ackerman um, bubbles along with some other Cremant de Loire's. Um, uh, like Christine said, it's made the traditional method. Uh, second fermentation is in the bottle, and this is just so delightful. And you know, if you think of tradition, Blending tradition with the Loire Valley. This is a Chenin Blanc. Uh, it's non-vintage, which means you know different vintages of the Chenin Blanc grape were made, uh, were used in this Cremant. Um, it's got a lovely mousse, very toasty, fresh fruit, but but orchard fruit, maybe some ripe orchard fruit, uh, buttery, a little tropical fruit notes. This is just a lovely wine to pair with so many of my favorite foods. This will definitely be served with dinner tonight. We're having seafood. And I think this is gonna be lovely and it'll just harken back all these great memories of the Laura Valley. So highly recommend it, the Royal Ackerman. Beautiful. Right nice, I love it. I like the crown. Okay, yeah. Ali, you're up lady. Well, if I can get my nose out of the glass. Um, <laughs> first of all, it's got bubbles and it's pink, so. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> but I went to Alsace in the north of France um, to pick my Cremant d'Alsace. This is the Lucien Albrecht um, Cremant d'Alsace Brut Rosé. It is also a non-vintage like yours, Cindy. And it also retails for somewhere in the $20 to $24 range, kind of depending on the market and, and where you find it. But um, you know, there's a lot of tradition here. The Albrecht family has been producing wines in Alsace for eight generations. Um, they've been in France since like 1680s of some sort. They started making Cremanta Alsace in 1971. I think a very, very good year, I might add. And, um, um, and this is one of the pioneers of Cremanta Alsace, um, which became an AOC in 1976. So I don't know, Christine, is this the, one of the oldest Cremants? I don't know. It is. It's, it's up there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I picked one of the oldest. This is 100% Pinot Noir. It is made in the traditional method. And it's got, oh my God, it's like, it's strawberry and wild cherry. It's everything you expect from a rosé. I'm not saying anything out of the ordinary. But it's really how it tastes on the palate. As much fruit as I get on the nose. What I love is that it's crisp and it's dry and it's got great acidity. But there's this really lovely kind of creamy texture in the mid palette. And then a long finish with a little minerality on the finish. And I'm just sitting here, I'm like, I'm just wetting my whistle for another sip. So I'm going to keep <laughs> sipping and I'm going to throw it back to you, Christine. 
Very cool. I love that. Well, mm -hmm. you, um, our viewers might remember that I spent 15 months in France mm -hmm. and during Mackenzie, our daughter's two week breaks, we would go on road trips and I went to the Loire Valley. I went to Alsace and we also hung out a little bit in this kind of, you know, not very well known region called Burgone, Burgundy. Um, so my Cremont is a Cremont. Yeah, I think I vaguely <laughs> remember hearing about that once. So this is Baye La Pierre, and it is a Cremont de Burgogne, and again, AOC. This, uh, this retails in our market for about $29 Canadian. Amazing. It's lovely. It's um, from the Auxerre region, so just kind of next to kissing uh, Chablis, which is quite neat. And this is um, kind of more round. It's lots of apple, lots of pear. There's that creamy mid-palate alley that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. It's not overtly complex, but you know, when I have friends over and I want to start the evening or the afternoon off on a kind of a fun pop note, and I might just get out one of my sabers, I would pop this open, no problem. I think Fremont is something that people should actually go towards more and more just to get more of a sense of the sparkling that can come out of France. You know, it doesn't have to cost you a hundred bucks. It can cost you 20 bucks and that is beautiful. Yeah, I, I actually, I, I totally agree with you. And I think a lot of people, well, first a lot of people call all sparkling wines champagne. Um, and I know, but <laughs> as we all know, champagne is only from champagne, but Cremant is made the same way with so many different grapes. I mean, What's not to love with $20, $29, yeah, low this, $20,000? I mean, it's just incredible. Yeah, there's no Voices risk there. taken, no risk involved. None. Purchasing a $20 sparkling wine. And, you know, worst case scenario, throw a little orange juice in there for a mimosa in the morning. Not with my rosé. Not with my rosé. No, 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 no. But I'm just saying, no, you know, I mean, when you're looking for something to do this is this is just in that right category it's it's the right, right price point for any solution that you need for celebratory for an average day i mean yeah cremants are my I, I wanted to just pop back in there and say that this is a uh, pinot noir driven and there's some chard and aligote and a little bit of gamay so it really mm. got all of those yes. varieties from burgundy in this and so this is a gorgeous little entry and i just I challenge you, beautiful viewers of Crush on This, to go out and experiment with Cremant <laughs> and give us your feedback in the comments section because we'd love to hear what you're drinking. We'd love to hear what you think about it. And I wanna just say thank you and cheers for another episode of Crush on This. Cheers. cheers.